basically they have tried to build the uh, a, a layer of abstraction via the software layer to essentially uh, uh, provide the user to uh, you know launch their workloads on top of gpus and the corresponding parts to uh, the, the the software component uh, uh, to the uh, uh, which is correspondent to these uh, hardware components is for a CUDA core, you essentially what we because it it, it is an uh, atomic compute uh, block of a GPU. Essentially, from a software perspective, what this means is that I can launch a particular thread or of computation on top of that, right? <clears throat> so basically, uh, from a software perspective, what the users are exposed to is to threads, right? And and we'll obviously look at a program, and I'll talk about that in more uh, detail. Now, when it comes to an SM, which is again a group of uh, uh, basically multiple CUDA uh, uh, quadrants of uh, CUDA cores, WAPs, L1 cache, and others, right? Uh, that basically means that we have multiple, uh, uh, you know, threads uh, being executed on 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 these cores, right? That means in an SM, I can now have a block threads. Uh, which are basically doing the execution in a block step fashion right so uh, again to the user threads and blocks are uh, exposed but not the cuda cores and the sms all of this abstraction has been taken away by uh, cuda uh, 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 compiler and the driver itself <clears throat> on the third part is when you want to spawn multiple of such blocks that means when you want to scale from a single sm across all the SMs in a GPU, that's where we basically call that thing as a grid. That means how I can have multiple of such blocks which have multiple such threads. That means grid basically has multiple blocks and each block has multiple threads. That means now I'm trying to run a massively parallel computation across the entire device and again we'll look at it uh, in in more detail right so again just to reiterate uh, on the bo uh, bottom most i mean on the most uh, on on the rightmost layer you basically see threads within a warp and again uh, this warp is basically there are uh, uh, four different quadrants in an sm that means there will be four different warps inside each of these sms and a warp is which will basically have multiple such threads uh, inside of it, right? And that's why you see uh, there are uh, threads called thread 0, 0, thread 1, 0. And these indexes basically represent is decomposition of the threads across the X direction and the Y direction, right? Uh, obviously, you can also decompose it across the third direction, which is the Z direction. But in this uh, uh, diagram, you just see uh, that the decomposition is happening across only X and Y. Right, uh, and when you now have you know a, a multiple of such uh, uh, blocks of threads, uh, which are being uh, decomposed across the entire GPU, that's what you basically call it as a grid. Now, the important things to notice is on threads, you are basically doing the same instruction simultaneously, uh, again without divergence, and each of these threads has their own uh, program counter. Uh, in the middle part, you basically have full concurrency guaranteed uh, within the warp itself. That means within the uh, SM itself, right? Uh, because you are basically spawning these uh, in a lockstep fashion inside one single SM. But when you basically go across multiple of such blocks, you know, uh, one important thing is that the concurrency is not guaranteed. That means I cannot compulsorily say that the thread which was spawned in my SM1 uh, uh, the time at which the uh, thread was spawned at my SM uh, uh, index zero, right? Uh, uh, and the thread spawned at the uh, the SM indexed say 50th might not be at the same time. So hence there is no concurrency guaranteed across the grid, but there is concurrency guaranteed within the SM or within the uh, block itself, right? And on the leftmost side, what you see is these CUDA kernels, which, which I'll talk about in more detail.
So let's take a very simple CUDA C++ code. Again, this is a very simple code. Uh, and again, just uh, uh, more like a dummy code, right? And what you see here is there are two parts to this, right? At the bottom most part is where you have the CPU component, where you're calling the main function. And the first thing that you need to do is allocate the memory uh, uh, on, on, on the GPUs, right? Uh, so what we do is we use a function called CUDA malloc. Now, if CUDA malloc managed uh, usually has two components, right? If, if I had to break the uh, memory allocation, generally in a more primitive way, the way you do the allocation is you basically do the memory uh, allocation on the CPU. You also do the memory allocation on the GPU. Then you basically do something like CUDA mem copy uh, uh, host to device where the host is the CPU and the device is the GPU, do the computation and then basically uh, copy that memory back or, or the data back uh, using the CUDA mem copy device to host, right? But generally to make sure that, you know, we are not, we are using the uh, global memory and we are not doing all of these transfers on our own, right? We, we can use something like CUDA malloc manage that can essentially manage the memory across the CPU and the GPU. Right, uh, which we also call it sometimes as the unified memory. Now, after doing that, what you're trying to call is a function called SACSP, right? And what you notice is that this, uh, uh, you know, structure looks quite a bit odd because now I have three, you know, less than brackets and three greater than brackets. And in the middle, I have some numbers over here, right? So what does these numbers essentially mean? Right. And when I look at the SACSP function, why do I have this underscore underscore global? And what is this block IDX, block dim, and thread IDX, right? So essentially, SACSP uh, is nothing but it's a simple function that basically takes uh, two vectors, X and Y, which are floating point numbers, and a scalar value called A. And the only thing that you need to do using the SACSP is basically do an accumulated multiply and add, right? And that's what you see over here, right? You're basically doing in the y vector, you are basically adding uh, 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 and uh, basically across all the ith elements uh, of uh, the scalar value a multiplied by the uh, uh, vector values of my uh, uh, x vector, right? And you're basically summing that up with the y array, right? And what you see here is I have not written a for loop, right? Which is very crucial to understand here is I have not written a for loop rather what i've done is i've basically for doing the indexing i've just used some terminologies which again if i look at it for the first time this will look a bit alien but i'll talk in more details of what these terminology means like what is block idx block dim and thread idx but for now think of it as that this is a way of indexing across the gpus uh, and for the gpu to understand how does it need to basically do the indexing of these uh, uh, vectors of y and x across the entire GPU. So that, that should be enough to understand for now. I'll go into more details and I'll go into more details of what these means. Which starts with underscore underscore global, the, the SACSP function itself is the code that runs on GPU or we also call it as the CUDA kernel. And the rest of the part, which is the main function is nothing but the part that gets executed by the CPU. So now the compiler right needs to basically understand how can i separate the cpu component and the gpu component differently and accordingly spawn the processes at the right target hardware so now let's look at it from a step by step perspective so first the function that gets called is the main function right you're going to allocate the memory on the host and on the device uh, then basically you're calling the cuda kernel which is the saxp that means now the cpu is basically going to you know decide what is the sequence of execution of these kernels? And based on that, basically, uh, you know, uh, move those kernels on top of the device for execution. So hence, you can see here the topmost part, which is the CUDA function now, which is the kernel one, right? Because I just have one uh, uh, GPU computing CUDA code here gets launched on top of the GPUs. That means now I've taken this SACSP function and now it is basically getting uh, called on top of the this on top of this GPU, where basically it's getting spread across these grids. Now let's look at the indexing in more detail, 
right so say for example i have a very simple example here right uh, i have a vector of size say 32 right now how does the gpu basically understands what is the index number right that means there needs to be some way of indexing this uh, in a proper way so that the gpus can basically not do the computation uh, or or mix up some of these indexes so here there are three important terminologies that we need to understand right one is the thread idx next is the block idx and third is the m right uh, we'll keep m for the later part but uh, let's first look at the thread thread idx and the block idx now say for example in my block right if i say that i want to spawn only eight threads i'm again i'm just taking an example you can obviously spawn more threads but let's just take an example so i'm trying to spawn eight threads per block right so if i have a vector size of uh, 32 what this means is if I, I can spawn eight threads per block i will need a total of how many blocks i need a total of four blocks over here right uh, so basically the thread idx the value of the threads thread idx will be uh, basically between zero and uh, maximum length of the block id or the maximum threads it can launch minus one that means my thread id will go from zero to seven only right now the second part to it is the block idx that means uh, based on how many threads do you want to spawn per block and what is the total size of the data set how many blocks will i need so here because it's an example with 32 uh, uh, elements basically i'll need four uh, blocks here but say for example uh, there are 35 elements that i want to work on right every time you will not have a uh, number which is which would be divisible by eight, right? So in that case, you'll need to have one more thread block. Oh, sorry, one more block uh, with index four, right? Uh, but in that case, what will happen is not all the elements will needs to get processed on the GPU, right? Some of them might be ideal as well. That means uh, 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 basically for odd numbers of uh, you know vectors, you can still do the computation but only the block id needs to be uh, basically be plus one in that case so m basically stands for the number of threads per block so now let's use this uh, you know functional or this uh, fun uh, this mathematical function and try to derive the location of each of this right so say for example i want to access the element 21 in this case right which has the value five Right, so I want to in, uh, I want to access the index twenty one, which has a value five over here. Uh, sorry, I think this is the thread ID. So what I'm trying to do is my uh, threads per block becomes my m, right? Now in which block this is is basically dependent on the block idx, right? So my twentieth index I will not be able to find it in the first block or in the second block, right? I'll have to find it in the third block. But because the IDX uh, is starts from zero, it is basically there in the second block. So what I do is I simply multiply the size of the number of threads per block multiplied by the block ID in which it resides. In this case, it is two, but uh, uh, because we have it from zero, right? Plus what is the array element of this particular thread? So uh, if I say zero, I mean two into eight, I basically come to 16 numbers here, right? Uh, till the uh, uh, light blue number and plus five, because I want to access the 21 uh, element over here, right? And that's why the thread IDX is five. So that is how the indexing gets calculated with the help of thread IDX, block IDX, and this M can also be referred as the block dimension. That means how many threads are we spawning in that block? Uh, so with that, uh, you know, short perspective, what essentially we are trying to do is we are trying to spawn these CUDA kernels on top of the GPU devices. And each of these grids will have these uh, different blocks which are running multiple threads within that particular block, right? And again, notice that we are decomposing decomposing this across x and y the example that i previously showed you was only a decomposition with respect to one dimension right but here you can essentially also do it across x y and z dimension as well right and how the block also look like or how the block gets mapped on the sm is basically 
all these threads that have been mentioned are basically decomposed across all these four different quadrants that you see right uh, because you have multiple of such cuda uh, cores in a single quadrant you can now basically decompose the block also uh, into multiple warps which are basically going to schedule 32 threads per block right so that is how the entire decomposition happens and you can essentially now move from one single sm and you can basically hyper thread or or basically uh, 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 you know uh, uh, move uh, you know, scale this uh, computation from one sm across all the one uh, not the 128 sm rather i would say 108 sm because the rest of them don't get used uh, so a total of 108 sm across the a100 gpus so this is how the hierarchical uh, scaling essentially look like wherein you basically are moving from uh, an sm which can basically run a concurrent of 2000 uh, uh, 2048 threads in a single uh, uh, multi core sm then you can basically scale this across multiple sms uh, which are basically 108 and you can essentially also now again scale it from one gpu to multi gpu and uh, you can further scale it from uh, uh, this system which has 8 gpu across multiple of such, such systems with 8 gpu in place right and that is how you know you you scale your computation across the entire data center or the compute uh, servers that you essentially have right and again uh, uh, the best example is you know training really deep uh, uh, you know language models like gpt3 that has about 175 billion parameters wherein you cannot fit the model in a single gpu hence you need to split that model across multiple gpus to take advantage of such large scale model and and to train them and that is where you know scaling this from one gpu to multi gpu to multi node gpus becomes extremely crucial so till now what we have discussed on a high level is how the programming or or how the Uh, CUDA, uh, uh, you know, uh, framework provides a basis for, uh, you know, doing parallel computing, as well as how the architectural design choices have basically led to the innovation in the overall uh, uh, performance improvement in performance, uh, right from uh, uh, the first generation with point uh, three forty five teraflops to now about nineteen point five teraflops and one fifty six teraflops uh, for uh, FP thirty two and TF thirty two respectively. and again the great part is that the underlying software has not changed right you can still run the same code uh, right uh, across all the different uh, generations right uh, now with that uh, uh, you know perspective of cuda uh, looking at cuda from a, a platforms and an ecosystem perspective to the computing architecture now let's do a little more deeper dive into rapids uh, right uh, and uh, post this session uh, professor pavitra will be going into more details about each of these algorithms and uh, post that session we will basically do an hands on activity where we use the rapids ecosystem for uh, solving data science problems and then i'll try to go through right from the fundamentals of data wrangling to uh you know uh doing uh, uh basically applying these machine learning algorithms on top of that and basically how do you scale it across multi gpu as well <clears throat> so so we'll talk about all those details uh, during the hands on uh now coming to data science right one of the core important things that we need to understand is the four v's of big data and again uh, this will be very prominent when you go into the industry because all of these large scale companies have huge amount of data coming in right and you uh, uh, probably as a machine learning engineer or, or as a data engineer or as a data scientist will need to you know use the right tools and technologies to essentially you know tackle uh, uh, you know uh, uh, all these different ways of of big data and 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 provide insights uh, within the stipulated amount of time <clears throat> so uh, again uh, these four v's basically refer to the variety where i have like i previously said right that you have huge amount of huge variety of data that is getting generated like structured and unstructured right uh, the second is the volume that means there is so huge volume of data that is getting uh, uh, you know getting published across all these different uh, devices like mobile phones and others 
that uh, you know bringing all this data set in a centralized location and viewing it holistically again becomes extremely crucial <clears throat> the third is the rate at which uh, the data is flowing right and again uh, this has to do more with respect to the inferencing because you see that today every service just give me a second